example, as I was saying, um, I basically brief everybody what is uh, dynamic implementation and then uh, uh, how, how do you do it on a mobile and what does it have to do with mobile security and such and such. So before I start, I would like to do a survey. Uh, what, what I would like to know if anybody does any of this on, on the presentation. Okay, maybe one. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So basically, that's how I started as well. Um, so I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm a security engineer in Grab, and uh, basically, uh, I was really into hacking games and then uh, flashing my PSP firmware. That's how I got into because eventually the hacking is more interesting than the game. So um, part of the motivation for this dynamic instrumentation is basically to understand how a cold source system works. I know that this is a open source talk, but sometimes we need to integrate our open source software with some closed source system, and they might not necessarily share the API or the documentation. So reverse engineer will come into play, and yeah, dynamic instrumentation is one of the tools that you can use. And also, if you want to uh, typically uh, analyze a office data binary uh, in the context of malware reversing or whatever, yeah, this, this could be useful as well. All right, so when you talk about dynamic instrumentation, what is it? Uh, instrumentation is basically um, monitoring a binary behavior or basically uh, adding uh, extra uh, additional instruction onto the uh, binary. So and dynamic instrumentation is basically doing that while the binary is being executed. Uh, it is also known as uh, function hooking or swizzling. And basically, uh, in one sentence, it's uh, executing your own debug script inside another process. So to illustrate this better, um, basically on your left is, on your, on your right, <laughs> on your right, is basically the instructions that you will see when you are running the application on the CPU, there is uh, one, two, three, four. And if you do some instrumentation, you would be able to uh, modify the application behavior by adding additional instruction before and after, and even removing certain uh, instruction. So why, how, how does it, uh, how can you use it? You can basically use it to access process me memory, uh, to override functions when some application is running. Um, you can basically, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you could do. You could basically change the course of the uh, application instruction set and do whatever things that you wanted to do. So why, 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 why do I care? Because to me, as a security engineer, unfortunately, this is one of the qualifications. Um, a lot of times, we have to uh, reverse engineer stuff, uh, and sometimes even malware as well. And dynamic instrumentation is a very efficient way to, to understand how a binary uh, works. So this is the site that I, I had before for a bunch of uh, security students in NTU. And uh, so this is something that uh, most students is involved in, uh, doing vulnerability research and malware reversing, and even hacking as well. And it's just some points that are uh, why, why they should care. Um, so enough of abstract, uh, enough of ab abstract concept. Uh, there are some tools that you could use to basically try out uh, mobile instrumentation, like Frida, Expose, and CScript. Does anybody ha has anybody have any experience with any of those? Maybe one or two. Expose, CScript. So uh, Frida is something that I use a lot right now. Expose is, I guess, is what everybody is familiar with. Uh, um, and also CScript is basically a uh, uh, mobile instrumentation that's very popular on iOS. It was built by. Sorry. And um, the tool that I use a lot is uh, Frida. Have anyone heard of Frida? Oh, that's excellent. Okay. Not the Mexican painter. Okay, that as well. Okay. So uh, one of the reasons why Frida was popularly uh, used and also why uh, our team or, or anybody that I know in security engineering is using this a lot is because uh, it basically supports a lot of different operating systems. And uh, what it does special, uh, what it does very interestingly is that uh, unlike uh, attaching your debugger onto a process, um, Frida basically injects a, a JIT, a JavaScript engine, like duct tape or even Google's V8. And basically, uh, the debug script that you read, uh, that you wrote, can be JavaScript. And I know that recently they even support uh, web, web assembly as well. So there's even more like for the stuff that you could do. So. Um, Back then, uh, there's a lot of uh, instrumentation framework that has very limited support, maybe only Linux or some only on uh, Windows or uh, Intel x86 architecture. Uh, but in this case, uh, Frida basically they, they put a lot of integrated 
create different bindings onto different optic systems. So um, in this example, uh, basically the debugging, which is the process that we're trying to debug, uh, Frida will inject a shared library onto the application, and uh, the shared library will wait for the debugger to, to send instructions to it, uh, basically to see what your debug script has to load. Uh, the communication channel is basically uh, dbus over tcp and i'll share a little bit more about this later so frida there's a lot of way to do it in mobile security uh it, there's two ways that this matters to us one is embedded and another one is injection uh, injection is really useful if you have a rooted android device but in the case of ios uh, you might not have a jailbroken device all the time and it's getting harder and harder to get to get one so basically what you could do is uh, you could basically embed the, uh, the FIDA agent as part of the uh, DLIP onto the application, and then it will load. And this will work in a jailbreak, agile environment. There are some restrictions, but uh, for normal debugging or instrumentation, it will work. All right. Um, there's a very detailed uh, FIDA API. It's not that detailed, actually. There's still a lot of stuff that happens. But uh, it gives you a good idea of what it can do. Uh, but basically, uh, for normal mobile security instrumentation, there is two things that we care about. How do you instantiate an object? And also, how can you hook onto the function? The second one is basically uh, using Frida, Frida's APIs to hook on the string builder function. So when string builder function is being called, uh, I could basically use this function to pass uh, whatever argument that is uh, it's asking and hook onto it. And over here is basically um, when the string builder function is being called, it will just console log uh, new string builder function. And the first one is for you to instantiate a uh, Java object. And this could be useful because sometimes some function that we are hooking requires an object. And uh, so, um, so to give you an, a quick example of um, uh, a very very common case that we would use in dynamic instrumentation is when uh, when you're running any application. I think some of the popular banking apps or whatever apps. They usually will check whether if the uh, Android device is rooted, uh, which is very common. And the the highlighted one are some of the uh, patterns that they will look for. They will check whether if the SU binary a binary is on whatever path, and if it is, then you return true. And there's more other condition as well. So there's a multiple root check to bypass it. Basically, uh, like the API that we showed before, you were able to hook onto the function. So over here, basically. Um, I hook onto this function, uh, sg.vantagepoint.a.c. The reason why it's, it is this is because the, uh, the, the, the APK that I was reverse engineering, uh, it has ProGuard, and it was optimized. And so you could see over here that um, when this function, okay. so the first one is that uh, when, when the function, fu first function was hit, it basically just returns zero, so it means that it's false. So in a way, we kind of hook the function and return false, no matter whether if the application discovered the file is there. So it's a very basic way of doing dynamic instrumentation. And then there's some al other alternative uh, way to do dynamic instrumentation as well. Um, because uh, for, for the method that we showed before, you have to customize your debug script every single time when you want to uh, uh, you, you instrument, you want to bypass the root detection. So this method basically, it will hook on some uh, Android function such as uh, activity or exit class, when the root detection has been detected, uh, it will usually exit the application. So we basically hook on those uh, activity and preventing it from exiting itself. So um, some, some application, uh, they will have secrets and they store it. And for if, if you wanted to uh, note, print out the secret, you could able to uh, hook on some uh, you, you, you could able to hook on the function that we're using and print out the argument or maybe the result so that you could see the secret. Yeah, so basically this is the script that I have. So I have a... I think there was a missing slide. Uh, but basically, my friend and I, we, we, we created some hacking challenges. Uh, for you to practice uh, dynamic instrumentation. It's called OWAP's uh, Crack Me, Mobile Crack Me. So if you're interested, you could check out. Um, I think I have some video here. Do we still have a lot of time? 12 minutes. 12 minutes, okay. 
I could basically just show you guys. Uh, where is it? So on my uh, on on the on the on my right, it's basically an emulator that already has uh, Frida running, and then on my left, it's basically I'm trying to run the Frida scripts. So you can see that uh, when I when I execute the application, my track me that we, that we created, it will tell me that uh, there was root detected on the device. And so on the terminal, it basically uh, modified the onclick function. So when I click on it, it will usually trigger a function to exit the application. But right now, I click onto, uh, I hook onto the function and preventing it from doing anything. So even if I do onclick, it doesn't do anything. And right now, uh, basically, I'm sh uh, demonstrating hooking a decryption function. So even though on the terminal you don't see anything, but uh, at the debug script, uh, I basically hook onto the decryption and print out the argument and also the uh, the, the return value of the of, of, of the function so that I was able to to see. So this is fun, but uh, things like this can be. This is just a crack me, like uh, it's a check created by human for humans. So some it could be um, unrelevant to what we are doing. So for example, uh, this is something that I just added this morning. So <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's some error. Um, so recently, I was really into malware as well because I think that it's fun. Uh, it's also like another challenge that was created by a human for a human. And yeah, so who are following uh, Android malware, there's this very popular malware called Anubis. And Anubis, they made some changes recently. Uh, they basically have a loader so that uh, when you're doing static reverse engineering on the malware, you're able to find the, the actual will be executed when you are running the application. And uh, the, the, the victim to know that there is actually a new payload that is replacing the actual application, uh, the file will be deleted immediately. So the whole process cannot be on Android so that they need to write the file down. Um, for reverse engineered, op obfuscated um, application doesn't mean the actual payload. earlier, I want to write a debug script, customize it all the time. So, which is a libc, uh, which is a low-level Android uh, libc function, and I basically hook on this high-level uh, function that they use to And yeah, so over here you can see that uh, I intercept it, it by just printing a console log. Bring the power to print out a message, so it doesn't do anything. So uh, do note that the the not the resolution, but just that the uh, the color of the emulator is very different because this is one of the pattern that the new Anubis malware did. So to inform the victim that the phone has been compromised, they try to change. The, the color or what do you call that? Uh, the color of the whole device as well. Not the whole device. Um, yeah, but basically you you see that it's it's, it's very different. So Flash Player is the malware that they they're trying to fit out. Uh, that is the malware. And so over here, I want to make sure I did. Okay, yeah, yeah. So basically, um, I ADB into uh, I basically log in uh, SSH into my Android emulator. And I try to watch uh, the data directory of the application, and, and yeah, basically try to see whether if there is any uh, payload that was created. Uh, do note that the watch function there is a two second, uh, it's a two two second frequency. So the delete function should be executed even faster than me. So if you notice. So do note the uh, Flash Player application. Uh, once the malware has been executed, the icon is no longer there, which I think is pretty interesting. So it does a lot of things. It will basically mess up with your accessibility so that on your device, uh, the whole thing will be different. And yeah, you can see that Flash Player is no longer there. 
and even on the terminal as well, we were not able to see any meaningful payload because uh, once the uh, app binary, once the payload was done, uh, once the payload was created, uh, it will be removed by the way. And so right now what I did is basically I removed the Android malware and then I reinstall again. This is a bad idea. Yeah, exactly. So certain malware that are really smart, um, they only package the, say, uh, the native library into ARM, ARM binary, and can support ARM architecture, but just that it will be really, really slow and they will, they will sort of uh, encourage the user or reverse engineer to do it on their real phone, which is a bad thing. But yeah. So right now I'm reinstalling the malware, not learning my lesson. And you can see that the flash player, player is there. So the difference this time is that I will be uh, initializing the, 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 the application with Frida to perform what uh, Frida called a early instrumentation. So uh, when the application was being loaded, it is stopped. Uh, it basically prevented from executing <coughs> any instruction that I have in the app binary, uh, and they tried to hook onto the function before the actual function was executed. And the function that we hooked uh, this time is basically a low-level function. Right. Oh, okay. I haven't started my Frida server. So when I resume it, you can see that uh, there's a lot of unlinked function that was being triggered, and then the Frida will basically try to hook onto every single one of them and replace it with this error message to print out. And then you can see that the, the malware will be executed. And right now, I'll basically SSH into the emulator again, and you will be able to see some differences. So uh, I'm not sure if you can see, the jar file here and also the dex file is basically the payload that the binary uh, executed. Um, to give you an idea of uh, when you download the malware and, and this dumped payload, what is the difference? Basically is something like this. So it's all gibberish and then if you compare to the dump malware, you can start seeing that uh, it is copying in pen and also they are registering register and do even more stuff. So this is the actual payload. And if anybody would try to reverse engineer the static application, not running the malware itself, it will not be, be able to see anything. Yeah, just an example. And um, over here you can see that they basically use a lot of uh, Java reflection to confuse the uh, reverse engineer. And yeah, and over here most of the functions and stuff you will be able to follow them, and you could start seeing even more uh, Android native uh, APIs. So this is just a small example. Uh, Frida has been a open source project since the start, and then it has been it came a long way. And if anybody wanted to get into dynamic instrumentation, I would recommend you guys to try it. So uh, some rec recommendation for venting, because uh, for an application developer, uh, this means a different thing to you. If you're creating a game, anybody could able to hook, modify the, uh, the app logic or what. So it's very important to, for you to understand as an app developer or whoever, to, under, to consider what portion of the logic should be on the client side and what portion of the logic should be on the server side. Uh, even in Grab as well, it's a very hard thing because um, Sometimes the developer wanted something to be optimized further, so they wanted the logic to be on the uh, on client side, which is something that we always try to check with them. Okay, this this instrumentation thing happens, and the environment that belongs to the hacker or whoever, so you have no control with that. Think about it. All right, I think that that's it. I mean, reversing mobile engine uh, application is illegal, so do not do it. Uh, there are some practical use cases as well. Um, there was this guy who built an iOS application and he tried to reverse engineer Uber app and all other applications and couple all the uh, deep links that all other applications registered in his application. So you could able to uh, automate certain flows so that uh, every nine o'clock you order a Grab car from or Uber car from uh, Lifelong Learning Institute to the airport. So he was engineer and he built an application out of it and Apple eventually acquired it. I can't remember the name. 
So these are my contact emails. So if, if anything, you could ask me. And yeah, not surprised. Grab is hiring. They're hiring software engineers, security guys, and also drivers as well if you can drive. <laughs> Any questions? Anyone have any questions? Okay. Um, so it was this guy called Oli. I think he's from Norway, and then uh, it was partially sponsored by this company called Now Secure. 